Welcome. Welcome. Yes, hey! Welcome back again to another edition of Notoricans. I'm Lazy Mo. I'm Hyper Lou. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It has been a fascinating and both exciting week, dude. Yes. I mean, we had the pleasure of, not the pleasure, but the honor of being and, and engaging in our first con. And I'm like, you know what? It, it was very surreal for me. You know, being behind the table, you know, and introducing ourselves to everybody that comes by. And of course, you know, being the opposite where I'm, you know, we both are usually on opposite side of the table, yep. gauging with, with, with the, uh, with the vendors, buying comics or whatever, and just having, you know, overall conversations with whoever, whether it be cosplayers or people alike who love what we love. But on the other side of it, wow. I mean, it's work, but it was fun. Uh, and thank you to all the people who came in to our table uh, and said hi and, you know, listen and us go round and round, round about about our show and stuff. And, of course, signing on as well and buying the raffles for, you know, for the bat, for the um, the next event that we're going to be having, which is going to be for Raiden's World. So keep tuning for that. But I, I have to say thank you each and every one of you. You know, you made it fun and interesting, and I look forward to seeing more of you again on the next con. Yeah, right. it was fun. And we had interviews, too. I mean, we got to meet some great people. I mean, you had the pleasure. I'm not mistaken. Who was it again? Keith Williams. Keith Williams, he, uh, the anchor and artist to uh, Warlock. Mm. Uh, Warlock is his most pronounced. He did a couple of inking of Spider-Man. He's, he's very good. He's a good good friend of mine too. Yeah. And here, way, all, in, all, all this took place at the BX Anime. Expo? Yes, the Bronx Anime. Yes, yes. Yasu's Bronx Anime, and that's like the for me, if I remember correctly, it's like the fourth year in a row. One, yes, two, three, fourth year, and the last the last one was in a church. This year was following the same church, and I know the one before that. I know we were in a hotel. So I have to say, because Yasu has managed to bring Khan to the Bronx and has made it now becoming a big extravaganza, to say the least. Yeah. It's not like just a spot where you just go pick up and buy comics or whatever, because you can go to any store. But now you have you have cosplayers, those that are in the in the spotlight, those that are well known that people follow. You've got voice actors and other actors, not not just voice, but also in film and television. I mean, you you was you was dressed as a uh, Starfleet, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Starfleet minus Picard yeah, season uh, season two uniform. I went as Wally with my wheelchair. Uh, yeah, Wally. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh my god and and it was and like i said uh it was work but fun work i mean i i really didn't know i mean i do but i didn't really know until like you don't really know until you really do it till yeah. you're on the other side of it because I, I was excited but i was also like him you know how, how am i gonna do this because it's just not no this is different so you know just wing it and each time people hey how you doing hey how you doing and knows that stop by to talk to us it was it was a pleasure. I don't know. I, I I this is my second time. I did it at the Bronx Comic Con when I was behind the table. However, I'd rather be on the other side of the table. I like mingling. <laughs> that sitting down in one spot, it wasn't for me. But I enjoyed it. But it wasn't for me. I don't know. Uh, okay, I, I know. I hear you because I mean, I did when well, we did get to go around and, and, and meet people, and, and like I said, meet meeting uh, entertainment people yeah. and. and um, and vendors of the like and so in a way it was like a little bit of both but more on the other side because you know we are promoting ourselves yep. Yep. and we're trying to get people to jump on our show and uh, and we, see we what we good. have to offer out there versus everyone else we had a good and, turnaround we had a good turnaround. oh yeah yeah we had a great turnaround like i yeah. said i look forward to next year because i'm definitely coming back and yeah. not just as a spectator no this is something i really want to engage yeah. in more and meet you guys so Please, when we announce the next one, please come by, visit, say what's up. Let's talk. Let's have a you know a good old fun time. Yeah. And now, if I remember correctly, your buddy, we had our first interview with your buddy. 
Keith Williams. And you went into, yeah, with Keith, and you got into a little bit in depth about yeah. what he's done. So here's that interview. Hi. Oh, yeah, I see him in action. My name is Keith Williams. Oh, what are you doing? I am an anchor. anchor. Uh, well, I was an anchor for like about 30 years. Of the over 40 years that I've been working as a how did you uh, get started? Uh, I got started as a background anchor. Um, Don Perlins, uh, who worked at Love for Comments and was an art director, I believe at the time, he called, he called me up and asked me if I was interested. I stopped over at his house a few times. His son, Howard Perlins, I think I knew. And uh, he introduced me to Jess uh, Fallon. And uh, after just a little bit, uh, he, he liked what I was doing, and I would show him for the very much for a while. And he called me up one day and said, would you be interested in doing a background painting for an anchor that works at Global? And I said, so, oh, yes. That was, that was my friend at the point. What do you prefer? Do you prefer anything now or going to do your job? Oh, I, I, I like doing what uh, I like inking by hand, but but I, I don't mind doing it on computer. Uh, it's a tool. It's uh, something that you have to learn, and uh, and it's fat. It is fast. You can do undo. Lots of undo. Doesn't worry about white out or erasing or something like that. You just undo it and then go back. How many titles we can say you've worked on? Oh my God! Give or take. Give or take. Yeah. Good grief. I, I don't know. It must, must be maybe in the 50s. I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe 50 titles. You can name your top five characters that you like working on. Can I like working on? Well, it's Spider Man. Walter Alex Sophia, my next shield. Work with John, John Brown. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah, it's Bill Alley, Walter Alex Sophia, with Greg Capullo, and uh, and I worked with um, Doug Bondi on uh, The Mask. Okay, five feet. Yes. <laughs> well, that that those came later, but that that, that you know I did like whatever. That was um, the ones that really you know I got involved about doing the first song. I love what the um, artists were doing. I like it. And then I was able to ink over. Right. 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 Got to be swim, huh? It was. Is this bunch of playing other people's universes? Yes. Yeah, and, and absolutely. I mean, I, I made maybe more like a participant observer because, you know, it's the band for you know, It's really like, you know, like manipulating, you know, like what the characters are doing. But no, I'm glad I got a hand in it. Yeah. Which one would you like to go back and do again? Back and do again. Any one of them would be fine. <laughs> really? Hear that? Any one of them would be fine. Uh, but, but maybe, maybe mostly Spider-Man. Yeah? yeah? You really like Spider-Man? Yeah, I really like Spider-Man. I find him so difficult with all that weapon. Yeah, he is, but you know what? There's a secret to how, how to work that stuff. Really? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's something that after you do it for a while, you just, you just get the hang of it. Because his whole webbing style changed. It changes from time to time. Plus, we were talking about Ford Arrows, 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 I could do either one, but I I I I actually like the Ford Arrows, Ford Arrows, Ford Arrows, Yeah, simplest thinking. You know where you're going. With it. <laughs> yeah, the Ford Arrows, one is cool too. It's a lot of dynamic feeling to it, you know, like, so much, so, so it kind of makes the character, the figure move. Oh, yeah. like, the way it takes away yeah. from the natural webbing, yeah. and then we find you see a lot of uh, knots. Yes, yes. Uh, you don't like the knots? The knots, the knots, are okay. it, it's interesting because, you know, I don't know how that, how that works in the web screen. But it's, but, it's, but, it's, but, it's, but it's a different way of doing things, and it totally changed how Spider-Man was shooting his webs after that point. You know, if, any, if, if there's somebody that actually was, was a person that could differently change Spider-Man, it was not bad. I 
We can check out this interview at Nerd Weekends on all social platforms with Keith. And yeah, definitely check them out there. You know, like Nerd Weekends. Yeah, absolutely. And you can also check me out on, on Instagram, Keith Williams Comic Book Boy. And we're back, and yo, that was fun and interesting, man. It was. Uh, man, he he he's really in depth, uh, and I love you know the 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 stories in regards to Spider Man and what he did. I mean, wow. I mean, that's a lineage in itself with the work that he's done and the process that, that he went that. through, the process that he went through to uh, how he started in the whole business. That was interesting, also. I didn't know. Yeah, he you started. know. You never really realize, like, you know, it's like when you first meet them, it's like, you know, they're already established. But yeah. then it's like in, in your mind, you, you're, you're not thinking, like, how do they get there? You know, it's like you don't think, like, the oh, it's the humble beginnings. No, but it is. Sometimes it's humble beginnings, and sometimes it's just the little things that, that start creeping up to the point where you're at this pinnacle and you're doing this, and now you're in the environment. Now once you're in it, you're in it. Yeah, and and he's and he's got a lot of, of history under his belt for all the things that he's done. I, I have to admit, I was like, wow, I didn't realize half the stuff that he's done. And I'm like, cool. And I'm looking at his at the artwork on the wall, and I'm like, wow. And it's like, yeah, he did all of this. Yeah. You know, it's like sometimes it, it's like saying like us. It's like we we're we're at what we call the humble beginnings ourselves, and, and just creating the name and, and then engaging the people and having the conversations and then waiting for the feedback and then just going on and on and on and hoping that, you know, yes, you know, we, this is what we love. We hope you love it as well and get engaged with us. So that way we can bring more of what you love here to the show. You know, it's crazy. I actually have a few of the issues that were up on the wall. Ah. I, have war, I have his warlock number one. I have all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And it's and it's a lot different when you now when you take a second look at it and you go after the interview. I'm pretty sure you took a second look and said, "Wow, yes." Okay. And you all the things he mentions, like yeah, I now it's like you take a second look with fresh eyes, and I was like, "Wow, yeah, that 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 I, that's all him. Yeah, that's all him." You you don't really think about it until you get to that point. You you hear it and then you go back and say, "Wait a second, And you look and say, "Wow, there it is." And you don't realize it in hindsight until after the fact, which is mm -hmm. really fun. And speaking of fun, I had, uh, uh, um, I mean, I got to see uh, Mr. Azar. I, I have to say, you know, this guy's built like a brick house, to say the least. Right. But he, he was the actor that was behind the, the, the body of, in Terminator Genesis. He was the younger Terminator where Arnold's older Terminator and those two engaging themselves in that bat in that scene in that battle. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, but such a humble and nice guy. I mean, wow. I mean, he was there on the table with, with his uh I mean, I, I was like apprehensive to ask, what's with the Terminator heads? Because again, I see the Iron Sheik and I didn't realize at first, and I, and even in that interview, like I realized it even myself, like the first time I saw him, and I was like, "Wait, aren't you dead?" And I'm like, "No," and he's like, he's, he's, he, the real man behind it has passed away, you know, rest his soul." But he is such a, I mean, my God, a a a, a spitting image to say the least, uh, and but again. Still a humble guy, uh, great, great stories that he had in regards to his time when he got the gig for f to do the Iron Sheik and then Terminator Genesis. And I'm like, wow. And you know what? Without further ado, here is that interview and see for yourself how much of an incredible guy uh, Mr. Azar is. What's up, man? It's me from the weekends here. I'm live at Yasu's Comic Con. I'm here with Brent Azar. And what's going on? That's new. Oh, we're how just, much you're loving the car? We're just chilling with fans today. Today's been a good day. Um, without wrapping things up, it's been a nice sweaty one here at the basement of the church. But, uh, I you. No, the, the 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 atmosphere here is awesome. The fans have been great. Um, you know, you, you do cons because you want to meet fans and you want to tell stories about what you're doing. Exactly. And you appreciate everyone who comes up to you and asks asking about that. 
And I got all of that today, which is what I'm here for. So what's been like the weirdest question you've been ever asked while you were here? So, oh, today or just in general? In general. So when I filmed um, Terminator Genesis, Schwarzenegger and I had that big fight scene. Right. When we filmed that, all I had was a sock. And so it didn't hide anything. But someone came up to my table and he said, can I buy the sock? And I was like, oh, this took a weird turn. I'm not an OnlyFans guy, so no, no, the sock is property of Paramount and Skydance. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, they wanted my sock that I wore on my area for the fight scene. So uh, are we uh, are we going to should I tell the fans out there if you want the sock, <laughs> just <laughs> send it to his address and autographed and all that. No, okay, 100%. no socks. <laughs> <laughs> this this is definitely interesting. So what's next for you now? You know, besides the cons, anything new that's coming up in the future? Cons, yeah, actually, well, I, got, I got booked on a film that I'm going to be filming in uh, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be uh, a character that is Mickey Rourke's thug. Ooh, which I'm really looking forward to. Oh, Mickey Rourke stuff. Yeah. It'll be a fun one. Uh, a guy named Tom DiNucci wrote and is directing it. I, I did a few DiNucci films, and I love them. They're a lot of fun. It's, it's, Rhode Island is home for me. Oh, okay. So anytime there's something in Rhode Island, I try to get on it. So it's... Here's a question. As far as the character here from the Iron Sheik, has anyone ever come back to you and asked about, like, the wrestling days when you were the Iron Sheik? Oh, all the time. What's been the best? What's been your favorite story to tell? Well, it's, it, it, well, or do you have any one in particular that stands out? Well, if, if I'm not the Iron Sheik mm -hmm. in the 80s, no, a lot of people come up to my table thinking that. And I'm like, dude, he, well, before he passed, it was like, dude, he's 80 years old. Do I look 80 years old? And they're just like, you're not him? I'm like, I'm 37 years old. How can I be 80 years old? So it's kind of, I mean, I love the fandom of it, but it's like sometimes I'm like, oh, no. But So I refuse. Like, if someone wants to ask for my autograph and they think I'm the 80-year-old chic, I'm like, I, I never sign an autograph for them saying, with them thinking that I'm the original mm -hmm. chic. So I always explain, like, look, I'm the actor who portrays them. So that happens quite a bit, and I'm surprised it does. But um, I guess I'm honored to have that happen. I mean, having that role in, in general mm -hmm. didn't come true. The dude was incredible. But is, there's a reason why he calls himself a legend. Um, and you happen to actually fit the bill with the look. I'm yeah, looking at so when I, uh, when I got booked for it, it was right in the middle of COVID in 2020. Hmm. Acting stopped in America. Yes. So I thought my acting career was on hold for like a year. And I didn't care what I looked like. So I I never shaved my head before. I never I had a full beard. I went to the bathroom, I shaved my head, I cut my beard, and I looked in the mirror, I was like, Wow, I look terrible. And my wife was like, Yeah, you're not gonna keep that look. Two days later I got a call for the casting of the Iron Sheet. Wow. And the casting director who knew me was like, Oh Brett, you shaved your head? I was like, yeah, what's up? And they're like, we got a good role for you. I was like, what's, how is that possible? Like, they're filming in Australia. Hmm. So I went through the process, got the role, obviously. But they had it that they, I kept a shaved head for three years, and my wife hated it. Hated it. She's happy now that you're just not yeah. in that look at well, She wishes I was still on the job working, but. She doesn't want me to have a bald head and a mustache anymore. Oh, the woman knows. Yeah. It is what it is. Happy life, happy life. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, Brenda Zah, uh, any uh, places that they can look for you on your social media? Instagram, at Brett Azar on there. That one. Just okay. one, plain and simple. Okay. And you can check out his interview on our website, Go to weekends uh, at odm.net, right? Go for uh, phone slash. You can go check out us on YouTube as well as the Facebook page. I'm Mo from Little Weekends. Grant, 
It has been a pleasure. Absolutely. I, I hope you, I mean, much success in the future for you going on. Hey, and welcome back. That was, to say the least, fun. And this guy and the stories. I mean, I'm still like, I'm still laughing in a way when, when he was talking about the sock. I mean, the, the, the fact that somebody actually asked him about the sock, because, you know, he was naked, you know, doing that scene. All he had was a sock, because that's, you know, that's how the Terminator comes through from the time travel. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, really, they went there, man? That's just, you know, I, I you know, it's like, it's funny, but at the same time, I'm going, I'm not that surprised. <laughs> I'm not that surprised. But again, you know, the, the, the fact that he was humble enough to 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 even say like when they were asking him things about the Iron Sheik, and the fact that you know some of them wanted you know the Iron Sheik's autograph, and he was at least gracious enough not to take advantage of a person and say no, I would not you know he would not autograph people that ask about the real Iron Sheik you know out of respect. So you know I got I tip my hat off to him for that, bro. He that that says a lot about a person. You know, the others would take advantage of it just for the sake of it. But at least he was humble in that respect and respectful. You know that he was, you know, he, he did a part and did it, for, I think, for the Rock show. But in the end, you know, he, he was an all-around good guy. And I, and I love the impressions at the end to, to, to tap off the interview. It was really great. I look forward, to, if I do come across him again, to, to say what's up and even have more talk with him, if ever that, that comes to pass. You know, and the fun thing about the con, I think, I mean, for me, this time around was a lot of cosplayers came to, to this one more than they did last year, bro. It was like yeah. double the amount. I noticed that. Oh, my God. And, and again, you're always you're always looking and, and you see like, you know, the 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 artistry and the workmanship that goes into creating, you know, whether it's an anime character, television, movie character, I mean, you, you see it and you just, you know, something, I'm in awe. You know, it's it's like the, the creativity that goes behind it, it is spectacular. Again, hats off to all the, the people that were there doing their cosplay, doing your thing. You know, uh, again, love your originality, love the spirit and, and the enthusiasm behind what you do. I really do. Um and come to think about it, it's like um, I think the 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 other thing I, I love was coming across, you know, when it when it came to the people and we were talking about the raffle and stuff, and they're like, eh, but then they joined in, and then when they heard what it was for, they joined in, and then a lot of them loved the fact since most of them were Latino coming, like, what no the Rican? Yo, I'm Rican, I love that. Oh my yeah. god, I'm, Puerto awesome. Rico, I'm, young. I'm gonna check it out. And I was like, all of them were really enthused of the fact that it's a, it, it's a re not a, so much a Rican show. I mean, we are a bunch, we are Rican, we are Puerto Rican, and we're proud to be nerds. But it, it's the fact that there's a Latino show based on it. I know it's that there is another show out there that has yeah. a Latino. I'm not saying that that he's bad, but I'm saying that at least it's another you know, representation. There's more, yeah, there's more representation going yeah. on, uh, and you know, in, in a way. We have, in a way, we should let the world know that we love, we are nerds too, and we love the same things you do. You know, we're nerd and we're proud, but we're also Rican. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, but yeah, uh, and I love the enthusiasm of the people that come over. I mean, even, um, what's it called? One of the cosplayers you, you got to enjoy very much. Oh, the Gothic oh. Spartan. Oh no! Her name was her name was Punchline. Her character oh, yeah. was Punchline. But her her her, her real thing, the uh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. She uh -huh. Go ahead, do tell. Uh -huh. Oh my God, she's bad. I'm mean, the first bad. moment that you saw her, he's like, "Dude, get me a picture with her. Bring her yes. over. I want a picture with yes, her." Yes. I'm like, so what, what I look like to you, your pimp? Yeah, pretty much. 
I, I, I just, <laughs> I just oh, I'm like, to get I'm like about to go over there and go, go hi, hi, babe. Uh, uh, the guy over there in the yes. chair, he really wants to get your picture. Yeah, I want to give her a ride on the wheelchair and everything, bro. You don't know. Oh, I know you were ready to give her the ride on the wheelchair. <laughs> you let it practically sit next to you on it, bro. I was surprised oh, yes. it didn't take off. Yes, yes. It was very, yes. Mm hmm. I would have cleared the path. I'd say, hey, coming through. My man's running out the back. He's, yeah, if, he's yeah. heading to where? I don't know. If I had the motorized one, she would have been able to control the stick. Um, Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Let's try and keep this PG-13. <laughs> thank you. Control the <laughs> stick. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But the one thing that was funny is that she, she you know, it's like she went on about, and I remember <laughs> when, when she said that, that she had five kids, and when you look at it, I'm like, five what? Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. I'm like, damn, you're fertile. <laughs> yeah. I was afraid to breathe on her. I was like, I'm afraid to breathe on you, girl. But again, five. I'm like, that's after the thing with like after that's the thing. That, I, I didn't stare mm. at her much. <laughs> oh no, 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 you didn't stare at her much. Not at all. Because man, I was afraid that I might get her pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you too, right? You thought yeah. you see yourself on Maury. Yeah. <laughs> Read the note, it says, and to the baby that belonged to Nasario. You are yes. the father. Yes. <laughs> that would have been interesting. That would have been interesting. And if it wasn't, if it didn't turn out that way, I could see you spinning around in your wheelchair, running yeah. away, going, "I'm such a puta!" Oh my yes. god. Yeah, yeah, she would have. <laughs> she would have definitely pushed twice. One for the baby. <laughs> <one> for the <laughs> wheelchair. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> see, that's the thing. When I was talking about with, with, with before, when it comes to cosplays, you just oh, oh. you yeah. have to. <laughs> it's like you look at them and then you go, okay. Yeah, because there was this one that was, it was fascinating, but also like uh, an HR incident waiting to happen because she was on stilts. Oh and, my god! It yes. was kind of like a Sailor Moon character. Yes, yeah, but was again, fun. Sailor Moon character, you know, wears minis, so it, it's like mini, and then there's legs, and then there's stilts, and even though they're covered. Not everything was covered, and I'm like, I'm walking down that way, and I stopped and looked at the vendor. I said, Nope, nope, I'm not walking yeah. down that way. Not because I'm in mean, right there. She, I, I could have walked right underneath her because that's how tall she was yes. taller than me. And I'm like, Uh uh, no, this is dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> this is an accident or an HR incident about to happen. Me, me on the wheelchair would have been like this. Uh -huh. See, yeah, see, that would have been right there. It's like, What are you looking at? Nothing. <laughs> what do you know? Nada, nada, bro. Nada, nada, nada man. Nada, nada. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 but I mean, she was so tall. And then there's this other dude, and I forget the character he was playing, but he had this gigantic bone sword. But it was beautifully yes. done. Yes, beautifully yes. done. I mean, I mean, you could see the the craftsmanship, the work involved, and, and, and it had making weight. sure all the ridges fell into place. It wasn't the perfect. handle. Oh, it was heavy as yo. Now yes. I know it was heavy. Yeah. It was heavy, and, and but thing is that that his his also total uh, character outfit design. I mean, yeah, forget about it. It's like awesome. it's like the anime just jumped out of the 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 anime just jumped out and and became life right then in yeah. itself. It's I mean, who else? I mean, who else stuck out that way to me? I mean, the wrestlers that were there. They were fun. I, I have to admit, because there were times it was in there, and we're like, hey, what the hell is that sound? And I, like, I forgot they had a ring in the corner. I wanted them to do the handicap match. I would have joined. Yeah, I know. I offered it, but they, they, yeah, they didn't have any. You know, I know. No. No. I know, I know. No, I said, he's dangerous. I mean, don't yeah. let the chair fool you. <laughs> and then they looked at you, and they're like, I said, don't judge the book by its cover. He's dangerous. <laughs> it's like, all right, brother, we're going to keep it out. So yeah, you, know, you got your insurance to worry about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You get injured by him, I mean, he ain't going to pay you for nothing. No. Your insurance ain't going to cover it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. We had, a, we had a good time. We had a good oh, time. it was a great time. Great time. So and, and like I said, Yasu was great. He always made sure to come by, see what we were doing, how we were doing. Uh, and his wife coming around, she was, she was, uh, I, 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 I love Yasu. her because she, well, she, she, huh? She's Yasu. She's Yasu. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's, he's JC. Yeah. He's JC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for correcting me on that. No <laughs> so when she comes in, she always cosplays. And then I think she has she was her, Wolverine, right? one of her, huh? She was Wolverine. 
she was Wolverine, and then somebody that was with her is dressed as Deadpool. Right. So they were doing that combination. But every time I've ever come to it, she was always cosplaying. Like one time she did cosplay as Deadpool. Uh, I'm trying to remember when was the last one that she did. But she's last always year, cosplaying. Huh? Last year she was Deadpool. Yeah, last year she was Deadpool. Yes. And she's always engaging the, the cosplayers. That's the thing. Yes. She gets them all involved, all into the picture taking, from the youngest to the oldest. And yes. she's like... She's right there, all in there, and, and, I, and I tip my head off to her because that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. When she was getting when when she wasn't um when she wasn't in in cosplay, and it was at the very beginning when we first got there to get set up. You could see she's like she's here making this happen, making that happen, this happen, that happen, this happen, that happen. I'm like, my God, she was like a whirlwind tornado of, of activity. Nah, she's good. She's good. She is. I mean, organized and ready. And just laying it out there, and the next thing you know, it bang, she's in cosplay, and then boom, up in the front, or you know, just right there, engaging with everyone. Yeah. Oh God! And cosplay, photo taken, it was. I mean, I got exhausted. I was just looking, and my neck was about to get stiff from from all the back and forth and stuff, because it was just that much going in, going out. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. But uh, again, it, it was it was amazing for such a a. a a space and wasn't like a, a it wasn't the largest space but it was large but the thing is the the amount of people that showed up this time was more than it was last year so it's like and the year before that so the growth is happening so i, I really look forward to seeing how much more next year crowd is going to be because it, it's it's a sign that at least as far as the bronx is concerned it's going to wind up having a name for itself as a place to come to and enjoy these type of cons yep and yeah. with that we're gonna jump on the third interview yep that was my buddy jay from jjl collectibles uh good guy my guy when it comes to getting a certain type of say graphic novels or books and oh, usually yeah. turns me out to the latest stuff yeah, he's, he's really good at that. I actually got my book CDC with him. There you like go. Him. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> let's go to that and see what Jason has to say about what the next thing people should check out. Hi, welcome again. Nerdericans, this is Mo. I'm here with Jay of JNL Collectibles. And tell me, bro, how's it been at this con? Yeah, uh, it's been great. I mean, it's always great to be a part of the community. We're from Brooklyn, obviously one of the five boroughs, Bronx being the other borough. Um, just having, have, always having a great time giving free books to the kids, uh, selling books, talking grading books, getting books signed by creators, Keith Williams. It's been great. It's been great. So this is usually my guy that I go to, and he's my go-to when it comes to certain books. And he's always giving me up to date. So do you have anyone in particular in line right now that you want to give me as a recommendation or to the fans out there a recommendation to read? A great, stands out? a great all around book right now happening is any book that has to do with the energon. So it started with Boyd Riley. Pretty much Robert Kirkman uh, owns the rights now to Transformers and Jack. Okay. So in Boyd Rivals, they show Transformers debuted on that. I guess intellectual property that mm -hmm. led to Transformers. It led to Scarlet Book. It led to a Cobra Commander book. It led to a Duke book. So anything Energon Universe right now is really hot. Great mm -hmm. artists behind it. Um, great writers, Danny Warren Johnson. Um, Leonardo with Robert Kirkman. So pretty much, and it's, I think it's a great pick because it's good for the adults. It's great for the kids. Get you back on Transformers. Because, I mean, we grew up with oh, yeah, So anything Energon Universe right now, great for the kids, great for the adults, I say that. And there's many things to change from. You can jump on a book, and you don't have to necessarily buy every single book. Mm. So I say Energon Universe, Transformers, Boyd Rivals, uh, Scarlet, Dude, Cobra Commander, and G.I. Joe's coming out soon. Are you here first? Check it out. Go to his page at JJL. At Instagram. JJL Collectibles on Instagram, yes. Okay. So if you want to write anything, this is the man you talk to, and he'll give you great advice and great books to read. I'm Nerd Rican. You can look us up at the LDL Network. For now, live long and prosper. 
Welcome back. And thank you again, Jason, for that recommendation. So, guys, check out Energon, anything that leads with the Transformers, because that's going to be a high item to pick up. All right. And with that, I think we should take a commercial break because we got some more coming up. Uh, something in the realm of the Japanese Spider Man. But leave you with that thought, and we'll be back after this commercial break. Welcome back to another exciting segment of Nerd Ricans with Mo. Dude! Mo. Oh, wow. Okay, where where do I start? Okay. All right, so just hey, before recently... We can, before we continue, it, mm -hmm. I don't know why I said it like that. I sounded like William Shatner. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> why did you sound yeah, like that? I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what were you going to say? Uh, that was it. That was that. Was, that, that I sound like William Shatner in the beginning. I don't know what the hell was going on. I felt so handicapped. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I'm giving you the Vulcan eyebrow now. There yeah, you go. I can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was recently introduced, and and mind you, I, I you know, who both kids from from the you know from the '60s growing up, and you know, watching like things, uh, Seven. from Japan like Ultraman. Spectre Man, Godzilla. You know, uh, but the thing is, Ultraman was a TV series. Uh, and I have to say, the, the imagination that, that captured me as a kid growing up watching like all the kaiju and, and, and the robots, the, uh, battle robots, let me correct myself, battle robots, a, as well as the characters I'm about to mention before, the... Japanese Spider-Man. It seems that Stan Lee brought to, and I'm trying to remember the name of the company, Toei Company. He brought Marvel to them and brought Spider-Man. So they created this character that's the Japanese Spider-Man. It's Spider-Man, uh, it's famous spider powers, but he battles evil on Earth, but also uses a battle robot to defeat the invading evil yes i know it's kind of it's kind of hard to, to 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 picture that but trust me i watched a, a segment of it and, and i just sat there and i'm like what uh, but it was but i i've never seen that one i've never seen that one i only caught highlights of it and thing is it's like there's a scene where it, it's you know spider-man and he's and he's facing off uh, uh, against the the rogue army of invaders from another you know another planet and of course, he's webbing, flipping, kung fu fighting, and I'm like, whoa! I kind of like this Spider Man. Oh, I like this Spider Man. And then when 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 things get a little crazy, and then a rogue monster comes out, or a robotic rogue monster, boom! Spider Man jumps into this rig, which then transforms into this giant robot, and then this giant robot is defeating the rogue monster, you know. Uh, and, yeah. and definitely in Japanese style and fashion, with, with, with punch, kicks, and, and whatever tools that at his disposal in order to defeat the monsters. But this Stanley letting that character open the door. Hmm? This is all new to me. I never. Yeah, I it, know what this it opened the like. door to to so much more that it led to the creation of what they call the Super Sentai, which is in. In the grandfather, you know, it's like the grandfather version of the Power Rangers. That's what they were, literally that. You know, they, they were, you know, uh, five or six uh, chosen uh, to, to be protectors of the Earth. And, of course, they call upon their powers. And, you know, just like uh, Rita in, in, um, in Power Rangers, they had their versions of, of and I'm trying to remember the, the, the name of it, uh, of who they were battling because it was like so much and i'm like what and, and, and i'm watching this and it's like oh my god 
But the thing is, it led to so much more than that. I mean, they tried to bring it to America, and for some reason, nobody wanted it. I'm like, why? It was so good. I mean, of course, it isn't until years later the Power Rangers were born. And it was so, based, this was like the foundation of what the Power Rangers was. I mean, Power Rangers, Kamen Rider, and all the Power Rangers, uh, I kind of call it uh, spinoffs that followed from that. I think what that nine, maybe 10 spinoffs. So I kind of lost count myself. The robot was controlled by a human entity? No, it was controlled by the, by the Japanese Spider Man. He would flip up, get into the robot. The robot then is now controlled by him, you know? And then he's going and defeating, just like the you know the Power Rangers when the Zords formed the Megazord robot, and then he had the big sword, which or either an axe or a sword that comes out, and that's usually what boom slice slices the 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 the, the how can I say the uh, the rogue beast, and then boom ends that you know that invasion at that moment. The, from the that reason point why, forward, the, the reason why I ask is I, I recently saw uh, I think it was a TikTok video. Of an old Transformers where the human would get into the, like, into Optimus Prime and control Optimus Prime. And I, would, I thought that was the most corniest thing in the world. <laughs> well, that's the thing. When, when, when the Japanese create something, I mean, from the anime to the live action, uh, and I have to admit, you know, it's like in the beginning when I'm watching this, it's like, wow, it's cheesy. But yeah. then that was, that, that was the beauty of it because, you know, you had the 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 you know like today we watch you know Godzilla versus Khan. It's a CGI Godzilla. Even the last movie minus one had a CGI Godzilla, which again enhanced the story and you know kind of made it more lifelike. But uh, you know I'm a kid from old. I mean the I actually got to meet at, at one con was it Winter Con? I actually got to meet one of the actors who played as Godzilla in Godzilla 2000. So it's like, you know, it's like when he when he spoke about his motivation, you know, it's like what motivation? Right. <laughs> you're a you're a force of nature. You just destroy. Hello. What are you motivated? What? Oh, I see a Twinkie in the distance. Look, chopsticks. I'm like, come on, right, really? Right, right. Come on. But I, I get it, you know. You he took it seriously. Like I said, you have to be the monster. You have to be that force of nature. I'm like. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I I, I kind of get it, and, and I'm like, you know, look, I like the cheesiness anyway because, quite frankly, it's like, it, it for me until about now, it was always fun when when you when when they try to improve a, a, the 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 guy in the suit. And we always try to improve the guy in the suit so they can make it more lifelike as possible. Of course, CGI kind of. Took that away. Now made now now you could create something that people go, whoa, that like like Shin Godzilla. That was scary. So again, going back to 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 um Super Sentai, it birthed other shows like uh Battle Fever J. Oh my god. Well, oh, uh, got something coming uh, in. What do you want? It says uh, FY, many of the fight parts of Power Rangers was just clips of Super Sentai. Yes, I agree. It was because again, Super Sentai set the foundation for what the Power Rangers are. Now, that's what you know. It's like if you watch the old, you know, you look at it, it's like, well, that's Power Rangers. They said, no, that's Super Sentai. That's Fever, uh, Battle Fever J. You had this other character, other characters like 3D Man, and they also were in development. No, excuse me. Those were in development. Excuse me. In my research, uh, they were doing a 3D man and a Moon Knight version. They were in development, but it never, you know, it never saw the light. Okay. So again, same idea. You know, uh, either a bunch of kids, young, or in like what Super Sentai, they were kind of like not so young, but they were some more like adults, and they were then chosen. Just like the Power Rangers chosen this uh, awesome to have this awesome power and responsibility as being protectors of the earth against God knows what. Right. It's like well, to me, it's like it is again watching Power Rangers and everything that was similar that had the same formula. Like, like my personal favorite one was Johnny Sacco and his giant robot. Okay. You know, you had the you had the uh 
kind of these uh, two spy the spy agency and then you had um the guillotine that's the name of the uh, opposing space group wanted to take all over the world they're known as guillotine <laughs> and and then you had the kid it was like no more than what six seven i don't know seven or eight years old then he comes in contact with the with, with the scientist who builds the robot guillotine is trying to capture it and next thing you know he got his hands on the watch that controls the robot and then that's it man game over so he had it done another what do we have here another audience member wrote do you think they did not want super sensei because they were uh asian because back in those days asians were not really to be on tv like they did with bruce lee okay that, that's I, I, I kind of have to, you know, look at it from a yes and no, you know, because again, you know, when we started watching like the kaiju stuff, and this is like they never, I mean, most of the time, all we saw was, like the monster films here. And, and it wasn't until like Johnny Soko and his giant robot, even though it was a movie, but not the show itself, audiences caught on. But they never adapted for the U.S. market because you know they had no interest in it. And to me, it's like they didn't see like the the money behind it. And I'm like, are you out of your mind? Because if it, you know, it's like in a way, Fox was like, you, you have to say, yo, you you know, bow down to 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 your intelligence to, to you know think- that you saw something that was profitable but you didn't you know you didn't i mean yes you you kind of changed it to more american for yourself so that the audience would catch on but to me if you know just left it alone the way it is people would have still catched on bro I don't we caught I, on in the 60s and it didn't change yeah but i don't think kaiju were that popular back in the those days oh, well they became popular like 90s and up i think not really because I remember when it came to Godzilla, I remember going to the theater twice to watch a Godzilla film. Godzilla was different. Yeah. Yeah, Godzilla. I know Godzilla was different, but it was still, you know, an Asian, you know, film about a kaiju monster. And and again, the only other time I saw similar to, you know, similar to 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 the Power Ranger or anything of the like was Ultraman. But that was, I think, on Ultraman was good. Ultraman was good, but I remember it on on Spanish TV because, again, Telemundo and all yeah. they saw the value in it because you know we loved it. We we nerds, you know, Latino and, and alike, we loved it. So they capitalized and put it on. And I guess ABC started thinking, huh, there's something here because I know they were a subsidiary in some ways with them, and they were like, hmm, there's something here. And then that's when they created Monster Week, and then what they showed nothing more than Japanese monster films. Yeah. One of them was Johnny Soko and his giant robot. So again, opening the doorway to bringing in the Power Rangers. I mean, or as I like to say it, they're 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 the the grandkids of the Super Sentai because that's what they are. Because the first and original Super Sentai, they're the ones that started it all. And that and that formula, if you watch that show and you watch today's Power Rangers, nothing's changed. Not a single thing. I, I mean, even down to, to, to the uniform colors, I mean, with the exception of the face, okay, you, you had different patterns, but again, same idea, you know, wash, rinse, and repeat, and it was yeah. still successful. Even and to me, it's like, I, I, I mean, again, I disagree with the idea of, the, of them having to make it all American because, again, we, growing up, we loved it. We loved it. We enjoyed it. I mean, to us, when it comes to, I, I guess the, 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 the mentality they don't seem to see is that when it's just on the screen and it captures our imagination, boom, we're in. We're in. We're locked in. We're all in at that point. Mm-hmm. You know, not it's not something like, oh, he's Asian and he, he's wearing a yellow suit. Um, No, I don't want to watch it. No, come on now. Really? Yeah. I mean, again, Power Rangers was popular. Yes. And what's funny is, is that when, when you... When you see the helmets on and they do their fight scenes, yeah, when they do their fight scenes, it, it's almost like they, they took a clip from somewhere in, in Japan and then just brought that over. And then that's and that was you know the the Japanese actors underneath the helmets. I mean, I used to think that. You know, that that was just the you know, that's how they brought them in by only the fight scenes and everything else. But then I realized 
after seeing Jason uh, and hearing his discussions that it was really them and they really had to train. He was already a martial artist. Most of the others, gymnastics, some had some fight training, but not as extensive as Jason. Jason was a true martial artist in that respect. Eh? Like that. They caught him. As soon as he did, a, a, he, all he did was a, a, a form, boom, you're in. They already knew. That's what they wanted. But yeah, the stories behind it, Again, watch, rinse, and repeat. I mean, Kamen Rider, you know, uh, the old Battle Fever J, Super Sentai, and so many others to follow. And again, started with the Spider Man, with the idea of the Battle Robot. That became a hit. Boom, Super Sentai followed. Then, then of course, you got Battle Fever J, and so on and so forth. I mean, Ultraman, again, became that from those things. It's like they saw the, 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 they saw the value because in Japanese culture, it's like it, this, whether you want to believe it or not, even though we were like into watching the monsters battle it out and stuff, and sometimes the dialogue didn't matter. But when you look at the dialogue, it, it, there was a story. Mm -hmm. and it, it was very intense. They, they're not, you know, <laughs> yes, it, 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 it's kind of cheesy. Translated, it sounded so cheesy. It's like, you got to be kidding me. But when you hear it and you see the, the, the subtitles, it's like, wait, they're really serious. I mean, they approached it in such a way that you get into the story. That's why I think with, 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 with Godzilla Minus One, going back to that, even though I'm reading the story, but I'm seeing it. And it was I'm pretty powerful. Sure, I'm pretty sure in about 25, 30 years from now, people at that time will be like, yo, the Avengers, which were, were, were cheesy back then. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but to right? us, they were ultimate. And with that, we're going to take a commercial break and be right back after these commercials. Oh, the portal to to commercials. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Nerdericans. Well, not another episode, I'm sorry. Uh, another commercial break. Uh, we are back, and I didn't sound like Shatner this time. Mo? No, you did not, way. but you were dizzy from the hammer, so that's yeah, why that's, you said to another episode, bro. That's what it was. I know, the portals that opens and close, sometimes yeah. you just don't know when you come back. I know, I'm going <laughs> to a handicapped world. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you never forget your first. <laughs> 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 so going back to that last question with, with um with Asians and television, you know, I I, I tend I, like I said, uh, uh, I don't want to agree, but I do. And and, and thinking back, you know, and, and looking, and and then when I read some of the stuff, for like I remember reading some of the history of Bruce Lee, for instance, and how you know when he was when he was starting his career. Uh, Kato as the Green Hornet in Japan, excuse me, in, in um, Tokyo, big, huge. They loved them. And that's why they call it the Kato Show. When you come to the Americas, it was the Green Hornet. All right. That but, was a sad time in America. Yeah, it was a sad time because they, you know, you know, they 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 try to cover him up, have him only come in for the fight scenes, have some guy, you know, fill in his, you know, for the voice or whatever, uh, and again. I had to tip my hat to, to, to Mr. Lee because with the prejudice and, and, and the powers that be that follow, he didn't waver. He didn't give up. Yes, there were times that he got pissed. I remember uh, hearing this story about him and Batman because there, there was an episode in Batman, the 66 series, in which they come across the Green Hornet, him and Kato. And they wind up having a fight scene together. Now, before the fight scene, you know, Bruce decided he was going to play a joke on Burt Ward. And, and he's like, and, and he was very out loud, outspoken. He's reading the script. He's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This says Robin kicks my ass. Nah, that's not going to happen. No, no, that's not going to happen. I'm going to break this guy in half. Mark my words. And the thing is, again, like the little grapevine, it gets to Burt Ward's ears. And he starts having a heart attack. He's like, Yo, this guy's going to kill me. <laughs> He's going to hurt me. 
<laughs> and then when they come to that scene, and then, then they go action, he's like, yeah, he's like, oh! yeah. that was a, that was an outtake, but <laughs> he scared the hell out of him, bro. He's <laughs> like, holy nightmare. <laughs> Oh my God. But through that, he managed to persevere until the point where I guess somebody was smart enough to say, let's bring this face on board. And they did enter the dragon. Now, mind you, he already had done a, a, a boatload, you know, he's already done his, his other films out there in, in, in Hong Kong. But this one opened that door so that all those other films were to follow. And made it possible so that people can, you know, studios can start looking at what Japan and, and, and Hong Kong has to offer because we've been seeing it, you know, from Spanish TV long before that in their animation, as well as their live action, Kaiju and all that. So it, it was for, of course, Bruce Lee and martial arts that it opened the door. I mean, from him, you, you know, action stars, Chuck Norris, Joan Vlogkanda, and I hate to say, Steven Seagal, and so on. Uh, Jeff Speakman, all these guys that have come through the ranks and, and demonstrated their, you know, their their fighting forms and have you know probably combined made many billions in sales in movies or whatever based on whatever characters they portrayed on the screen, but the martial arts. They had to thank Master Lee for that because Master Lee made that possible. Yep. You know, he made that possible. And a lot of what we enjoy both in the martial art world of entertainment and in the the world uh, of fandom, you know, Super Sentai, uh, how you call it, Super Sentai, uh, what's it, Power Rangers, Kamen Rider, all these that have martial art based characters fighting you know against space invaders or what have you thanks you know you have, you have to be thankful in that respect now that it's in the american market because of mr lee they opened the floodgates mm -hmm. and forevermore you know as far as the studio execs are concerned some of them are like looking at the cash value of what they you know, what they now have which they should have done years ago and also thanking also and i have to remind myself of this Stan Lee, because he also had the genius to see the value of the imagination of of Japan and Tokyo and their characters, and to bring that to life. I mean, he gave them Spider Man, which led to, like I said, the Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, Power Rangers, and all the other Power Rangers. God knows, nine or ten of them. I I lost count, but they're all right. great in that respect. Movies, merchandising, all of that. Because these men saw the vision and one worked hard to make it happen and become the face. The other one was trying in the background to bring it to the audience. I mean, yes, the prejudice was there, unfortunately. But I like to say that now, you know, we progressed, you know, hope progress as a, as a species. I mean, we still have a ways to go, but a lot has progressed over the years. And we're now enjoying that which we enjoyed as youngers. Now it's in the forefront. It's there. People want it, love it, need it, want it more and more and more. And it's great. It's great because now you can enjoy that. I mean, even now, I was just watching, um, I don't want to say Bollywood, but an Indian version of, and believe it or not, the Voltron with the, the cars and the airplanes I just saw a, a video on YouTube. I'm going to look it up again. And it was great watching. I'm like, what? It, it's, it is, you know, kind of Bollywood, but it was so good. But it was like using today's set special effects, okay. which was the perfect thing. Because now the robots are more, you know, like, like they're not like Pacific Rim, but close enough. Okay. So I, I'm waiting for when they do something like that, and it's got that specific rim style because that's what's gonna be awesome. Well, that's the cartoon. The cartoon was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was. And it was. And I'm hoping that they bring it live and they do it in that way with uh, Pacific Rim type special effects and all. Yes. So, so that's gonna be oh my god, such a pleasure to watch. Even if they bring the five lions like that, that'll be awesome. Oh, 
<laughs> it's like I, I turned on YouTube and I was looking, looking, looking while I was doing the research for this. And then I came across, you know, form Voltron and I click it on. And he says, go Voltron Force. And the guy hits the switch. And he's, and he's like, Dino Therms connected. Intracells up. Yeah. Mega thrusters are go. Yeah. yeah. I'm old enough to say that and I can get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a nerd and proud, bro. But it was <laughs> beautiful just to hear those things. And then you hear that. Dan, 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 yeah, dan. Yeah. Oh, awesome. my God. I think I saw the same thing. We sat there and goes, form feet and legs, yeah. form arms and torso. And he says, and I'll form the head. <laughs> Which in today's time sounds wrong. But um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that would be, you know, uh, yeah, mm. I know. that's a no-no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and like the women said, I formed that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna, not gonna touch no. that one. No, 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 no. Don't want to be a nerd HR. <laughs> 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 and with that, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta say, it was fun, and I hope you had fun, and I hope to see more and more and hear more and more of you so that we can bring, continue bringing the content that we bring to you that we love to enjoy so much. On a special note, keep an eye out. Wait, no, Go on your YouTube that, channel and check out the latest preview of Star Wars Skeleton Crew. It's going to be uh, streaming on December the 3rd. And on top of that, don't forget to check out the latest video that I saw uh, just recently where they uh, slipped out uh, uh, or, say, leaked the footage of the Red Hulk soon. A different by, version of it? Yeah, for Captain Harrison America. Ford. Oh, yeah, my Ford. God. What? Yes. As awesome. soon as I saw it, I was like, but oh, I thought that man. was I thought that video was a fan made, but no, it's actually Ooh. alive. It's no, it's a real it's, thing. It's a, it's supposed to be a scene where he something happens and then he just he transforms right then and there. Uh, I was on the was it the was it, is it the D three the D three uh yes or expo and they showed that scene and they, they leaked that footage. You know, it's like you know what this has not been taken off. I think in that respect because they're not gonna you know scream copyright because already the first trailer, even though they didn't show the head shows. The Red Hulk standing, grabbing, you know, Cap Shield and throwing it to the ground. Yes. So it's already out there. So it's not like, oh my God, we we leaked out the Red Hulk. No, it's like it's like in a way where someone <coughs> when he leaked out Deadpool. Yeah. You know. So. <laughs> but and I gotta admit, it's it's kind of a a brilliant a brilliant idea to do. Brilliant. And when you look at you know. They also they also released uh, a preview, a trailer for uh, Toy Story Five. <gasps> yes, and Incredibles yes. and Incredibles Three. I know. <laughs> and Lilo and Stitch comes out next year. Mm hmm. It's Lilo Stitch an comes out next year. And for all you horror fans out there, don't forget this weekend, Alien Romulus. Uh, I, we don't know if Tim Allen is going to be involved. With the new, yeah, uh, because the other film which featured uh, we call it the uh, Buzz Lightyear, actually, the actual person, it wasn't Tim who was voicing him. Really, I don't think it was him, I could be wrong. No, I think it was him. I, I don't, I know that the, the, the toy line for uh, Tom Hanks' character is not Tom Hanks, you do know that, right? Really, yeah. The toy line, it's his brother that does the voice oh. for the toys. Oh, yeah. oh, so that's something you knew. It's like you learn something new every day. Yeah, his brother, his brother's the one that that uh, that does the voices for the uh, the Tom Hanks character car, uh, toy lines. Yes, Tim Allen was Buzz. Okay, yeah. but I'm talking about the other one, and I might have been mistaken. But you know what? I, I like. Oh, to you're talking the about the Buzz, the Buzz Lightyear movie, the one that he's done by himself. Yeah, uh, where he's actually the you know the actual character, not yeah, the yeah. toy. Yeah, the yeah. actual character was traveling out there. The, anim the animated version, the the, the, the animated movie. version of the adult, you know, real that's, real life that's Buzz, the as they call it from that show. I don't 
don't remember if that was actually that's the guy that does of, Captain of America. Him. Hmm? No, it's, it's the guy that does Captain America. There you go. Yeah. So that that's that's the one because I know as far as the Toy Story is concerned, yeah, that's definitely Tim. But as far as this is concerned, the actual when they did actual Lightyear, no. Yeah, what no, about I, I remember you, that wasn't his voice. Hmm? No. And the trailer for the new Paramount Star Trek. Uh, Section 31, as well yeah. as the new season, which I cannot wait after seeing the little trailer that they did for season three yes. of Strange New Worlds coming out on my birthday in May. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to wait a while, but, you know, that's yeah. okay. It's I am happen. willing to wait, but don't make yeah. me wait too long. Please no, don't make me wait too long. I have a feeling this season is going to be interesting. Oh, interesting is an understatement. I can't yeah. wait to go to Comic Con to see what they have over there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many definitely, days you got for Comic Con? Definitely. Huh? How many days did you get for Comic Con? Tres. Ah, no, you know me. Thursday, Friday, me. Saturday, bro. I got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I got no, four. excuse me. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Excuse me. Not Thursday through Sunday. Th Thursday, unfortunately, I, I couldn't get off. But I can do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is fun enough for me. Yeah. And I, with that, I do, Ladies and gentlemen, um, stay nerdy and proud. Again, I'm Lazy Mo. I'm Hyper Lou. And you've been watching Nerd Ricans. Live long and prosper. Take care. Yep.